Greetings ladies and mental gents, and welcome to this daily science fiction extravaganza commonly known as Tales, Tales from Out from space. Out, space, out, space. Out, space. Taken from the subreddit HFY, all the relevant links will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider supporting the channel. On to the science fiction. Story number one on the human condition written by C underscore 23. Why are you humans the way that you are? Funba finally burst out. She had been trying to communicate that question in more delicate ways, but it didn't seem to be working. The barest hint of a smirk showed on Natalia's face. What exactly do you mean? It's just that I've seen you in so defiant in the face of challenge, so generous, proactively generous to your own species. Fanbu took a sip of the Deuterium water. I mean, random example. Just last year, a human charity from Europa and Titan crowdfunded something like 3 billion credits to help the next Thai people recover from those volcanic eruptions. I admire it. I appreciate it. But I just don't get it. Natalia shrugged. The Nuxti have always been sweet to us. She paused for a moment. Anyway, I think you're overselling us. Humans have proven to be evil so many times. We fought our own for tens of thousands of years. We've just gotten a little more wise since then. But there's still murder, kidnapping, crime, drugs, and all the rest. We are a flawed race. We have such intense capacity for cruelty sometimes. Everyone has their bad, everyone has their good. I'm not calling you a perfect species. That's impossible. But humans, above every other group that I've ever met or heard of, seem almost aggressively benevolent. Your rage against injustice. You protest for fights of people you have barely even met. You scream until your last breath about the virtue and truth of freedom. There are bad humans, yes, but I wager for every bad, there's 300 good. So again, I ask you, why are you the way you are? We of the Yarkin species are fair and kind and just to ourselves, it is true. We have unity and order, but we never even had the concept of charity until you humans came along. I just don't get it. Funba, embarrassed at her own passion, settled back into her chair. We, well, Natalia started. There is a concept we have, it's called the human condition. It sort of means, well, it encompasses everything human beings encounter in life. It is our curse, it is our pain, it is our suffering, our fear. Everything good you see in us, every generosity and love is born from our suffering. It is the rise from the darkness that gives purpose to the light. Natalia took a long sip from her now cold tea. I'm sorry if I'm getting crazy philosophical, but it goes like this. My brain somehow evolved to be imperfect. I naturally produce an imbalance in brain chemicals, and it freaks me up. It can rip all the emotions from my life. It can pull me down into the depths of an anxious fear. We call it depression. Something like 20% of us humans have it, and a whole host of humans have different but kind of similar problems. There are days, weeks, months in our lives where we fight to get out of bed, a fight to go to bathe, a fight to go about my day to go to work. It can be a fight to do anything. My own brain screams in disagreement at me, and I have to work against that for every single breath. It can be torment. Natalia's eyes were focused on Funba's. Do you guys have anything like that? Funba looked back with wide eyes. No, no, not even a little bit. I, I don't even know what to say. Natalia waved her pity. It's fine. It's what we are. The pain is why we are the way we are. That's your answer. I uh, still don't think I quite get it. Funba replied quietly. It goes something like this, I think. When you have been into the darkness and come back to the light, you begin to understand suffering. You begin 
to hate it, to feel in you a desire to fight back with everything you've got. I am kind because, well, I understand the pain that comes from the inside. I am kind to people to keep them in the light of happiness and joy and peace from the burdens of minds as much as I can. Natadia spoke in a calm intensity. Human beings do good things because we experience the madness of our own human condition. Most of us roam through life, our naivete battered to death by our own dark emotions, and fight to preserve it in others. Natania looked at Funba's eyes and smiled weakly before saying, Let us shoulder some of your burdens. We have faced plenty before. It makes us feel like we matter. End of story. Story number two, Insatiable, written by Joramunda. I rushed to the meeting room, all six of my lower limbs moving at a brisk gallop as I made final notes on the data state attached to my forelimb. First contact meetings were rare, despite the size of the Allied Federation, and being able to work one is an incredible honor. It also always is a mess because there's no experts and anyone assigned has to relearn first contact protocols. I've been assigned to the nutrition evaluations and thus far I'm having little progress for the first meeting I was late to. After toxicology finished their work, it is my job to review what foods are available from the current member species that would be compatible with the humans. Carbon-based, mostly water, and from what plant-rich world I initially assumed primarily vegetative. But then I saw a note that they were omnivores who consumed herd species. It made it more complex, but nothing too terrible, until I noted that they required minerals like uh, magnesium, phosphate, and frequently added rocks of sodium chloride to their food, so minerals had to be added to the list as well which started me back at the start of all of the food available that wouldn't be poisoned to them. By the time I'd finally selected some initial foods for the meeting, I was running much later than I had expected. Finally, after selecting a few last-minute pieces, I made it to the meeting room. I took a moment to compose myself, making the final confirmations on my slate, and opened the door. The reports I'd received were incomplete, and I would have to make sure it noted later. I've been told bipedal, patches of hair, omnivores, and mostly water. I was looking at a forward-facing eyes of a predator that was standing before me, presenting its teeth. Teeth which were dashing whatever expectations I had for these meetings. It had incisors, canines, and molars in its mouth that was slightly smaller than what it would be able to adjust for when I'd read had cheeks for containing food. I'm sorry I'm late. I hope you've not been waiting too long. My name is Skrithax. I take it that you are Ambassador Romadai? I hoped my translator could pass along the apology in my words, but couldn't be too worried about it for now. I took my seat, and the human ambassador did the same, seeming to wait until I had done so. Yes, that is correct, and no worries. I have come to understand that the report I had submitted in the lead-up to this meeting had been... Uh, difficult. My translator passed a minor inflection of something, both sarcasm and regret. Its face, however, squirmed and wiggled with small muscles moving and twitching beneath its skin. They weren't the only species to have facial features like this, but it was always somewhat eerie to see it in action when you were not expecting it. Once I'd finally settled and the room controls had been brought up, I answered them. Nothing terrible, I assure you just difficult to narrow down a few things. I pressed a series of buttons and a conveyor of twenty or so dishes came in and an assistant entered and I walked near the human, prepared to clean up after or assist the human as it needed. I hope you'll forgive me for the white selection and please let me know if it's too much, but I have selected a varied course of some traditional meals that I believe that you may enjoy." The human looked upon each in turn, its face wiggling as it looked upon them. But eventually, it more or less settled on the two face which brought the smaller fur patches together and slightly lower above its eyes. Is this everything? it asked, the translator noting concern. Not to worry, I wasn't planning on completely fill you with food in our first meeting. This will be all we go over today. 
Simply tell me how you feel about each as we go through. I was already making a note of its possession of cheeks appeared to be somewhat misleading. Their face seemed to turn down, the ends of the mouth more pronounced, so which I took as a good sign. Ambassador Romadi covered himself with fabric and with an attempt to try various utensils, but its multiple short digits excluded most of what we settled on traditional eating utensils. When it reached for the knife, both of the assistant and I froze. I'd seen the note that the species was somewhat aggressive and prone to combat and violence, but this was unprecedented. It moved the knife to the food and began cutting the first dish. The tarpon grub wrapped in galmol algae. By the time I realized what the knife had not been for self-defense but for eating, I'd need to talk to the cultural affairs and let them know the possible issues that we may have with a weapon being a utensil. The ambassador ate the dish and then delicately wiped his face with the fabric, which I'd made note of for my report later. Thoughts on the dish? Ramadi took a moment, seeming to contemplate the food. It is very bitter. I'm not quite sure I liked it. Understood? I'll make a note of it for our files. The rest of the time was spent much the same, the ambassador eating each dish in a bite or two and then letting me know its thoughts. The ambassador was not a fan of many of our foods, but that wasn't too surprising. We ended the meeting then and there with the last dish, both leaving to complete our own reports of the interaction. I contacted Culture and told them about the utensil weapons, filed a few notes for future first contacts expressing the need for greater analysis and understanding of descriptions and compositions, and then received a very urgent message in my inbox. It seemed my presence was being immediately requested by the station cafeteria. When I arrived, I saw a small group huddled around a table, apparently onlookers of some scene. I found the manager who caught my gaze and indicated that this was indeed what I'd been called in for. As I approached, I caught a glimpse of the ambassador that I'd just spoken with, their head down. Before them were the various meals, and with drawing horror, I realized many were considered poisonous and all of them were available in fairly great quantities. I pushed and shoved my way, already putting my data state to call emergency services when I saw the ambassador up close. They looked almost exactly the same as before. The ambassador looked up, seeing me, wiggled one of his appendages. Sorry, but the meeting didn't have much food and I'm starving. We'd already looked to see if a few different foods were fit for consumption, so please forgive me for not clearing it with you first. I'll give you a full report tomorrow of my opinion on these. I looked on in shock. Ambassador, many of these are considered poisonous to your species. Please come with me to medical suite so that we can at least confirm that you won't be injured or otherwise incapacitated. The ambassador shook his head. No need. It's what I was trying to explain earlier. We submitted some of the foods we ate to your toxicology guys and they kept coming back trying to disagree with us on it. He raised a limb holding the data slate and made a few presses. Just sent you the report we sent them. Feel free to use that instead. I was about to put it up on my data slate when my eye caught one of the meals. It was the first dish of the top from grub and the galma algae. Forgive me, Ambassador. I was under the impression that you hadn't liked that particular food. The Ambassador looked at where my forelimb was pointing, finishing chewing, and said, I didn't at first, but that's just because it seemed to be more of an acquired taste. It's not bad, just need to get used to it. I still called for emergency service to be present and on standby, but the outright refusal of the human ambassador meant that they could only stand to the side watching and waiting to see if the human suddenly reacted. I went back to my office and reviewed the file, not quite ready for it. Per the human and embassy report, they were able to consume most any plant or animal material aside from the hardest or most dense substances. But even in these cases, they could prepare them in different ways to change that, as they had a prolific bite force. The toxicology reports had a list of class 4 poisons that the humans apparently regarded as spice, something they added to flavor or specifically for its poisonous properties. Caffeine, nicotine, capsaicin, menthol, alcohol, and the list kept going, and reality began to set in that finding something the species couldn't eat would be a far better alternative for my work. When I saw the amount of food that they were capable of eating, I realized that the ambassador had not been showing pleasure when his face was pointed downward. 
I'd barely given him enough food to count as a full meal. Finally, I looked for what I'd meant for a quiet taste. Apparently, amongst the humans, this is meant as a phrase for something that doesn't taste good the first time you trade it. Meaning that no matter what their thoughts were on the dish, it didn't mean that they wouldn't like it later. Exasperated, I filed a complaint to toxicology for having not passed on vital information and prepared to spend the rest of my cycle working to try and find different foods that would hopefully test the limits of their appetite. Almost as an afterthought, I sent a message to the trade relations department to let them know our new insatiable addition to the Alliance. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this dose of science fiction fun. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you did, please don't forget to support the author from the link down below. But if you want to support this channel, there are links as well down below for you to help with. But the easiest way would be to share this video. And if you are so inclined, subscribe as well. I will see you all in the next episode, and I hope that you all have a fantastic time until then. Cheers.